today we're going to talk about the gold price in 2024, but we're also going to be talking about the silver price and where we see silver going when these predictions come true. Will any of these predictions even match what we think the gold price can go to? Well, at least what I think. That's a little presumptuous of me to say we, because it's really my prediction that we will get $2,600 gold in 2024. Thank you for being here. Let's dive right in. The first prediction we have for 2024 from DBS. Who's DBS? DBS is a massive bank in Singapore. Why does Singapore matter? Singapore really matters because they are a large, vibrant, wealthy country. Isn't Singapore that place? Is it a country? Is it a city? It's both, basically, but a very successful country and city. And did you know that Singapore has amongst the highest per capita income of anywhere in the world? DBS is one of their big financial companies. What are they saying about gold? Why does it matter? Because people in Singapore are gold crazy. We know the Singapore Central Bank, well, like a lot of the central banks in the East, they bought a lot of gold over the last year. DBS Bank, DBS Bank has 36,000 employees. This is a big, big outfit, a massive financial services company. I don't know that I like their prediction, but they are saying $2,050 per ounce for gold next year. Now, let's move over to the United States. What do you think when you hear the words Goldman Sachs? Yes, Goldman Sachs. You know, that fancy American financial services company, probably not the biggest, but one of the most respected, one of the most prestigious, right? Maybe not quite a J.P. Morgan Chase, but nonetheless, Goldman Sachs holds a lot of sway and always gets people's attention. They have a weird number that they're predicting for gold for 2024. $2,133 per ounce. Now, I guess they have some fancy model that they plug numbers into to come to a kind of an odd number. Like you would think they might say $2,150 or $2,100. No, they say $2,133 per ounce. Well, Goldman Sachs, we'd be interested to hear from you. What will the silver price be exactly to the penny when gold hits $2,133 per ounce? And are we, isn't it going to be funny if they're correct? I, do you think they'll be correct at some point in 2024? I do. And we're going to talk about all the reasons why the gold and silver market could have a healthy 2024 a little bit later in the video. But we got six more big banks big, crazy, prestigious, one of which you haven't heard of, but when I tell you who they are and what they do, their prediction on gold in particular is going to make the hair stand up on the back of your neck. Yeah, back there. I can feel mine standing up just thinking about it. ABN AMRO, that's a massive Dutch bank. The Dutch are smart people, okay? If you, they, there was a point in history when the Dutch ruled the world. ABN AMRO is a massive Dutch bank. We don't like them too well because they're not making real good sense when they're talking about what they see for the 2024 gold price. They're predicting $2,000 per ounce. Somebody needs to send a telegram over to Holland and let them know that we already hit $2,000 an ounce and we still have two months left to go in the year of 2023. Next, we're going to talk about city. But first, please, I want to ask you, give this a thumbs up. That really helps the channel. That really helps get the news out to more people about what's going on in the precious metals market. I really appreciate you. Yes, you. And remember, this is critical. There's only one you, right? It's a group. We're basement dwellers. We're together. It's Sunday morning. We love to talk about the precious metals. It's a big deal. It's a big honor that you're here joining me in the basement, but we are a group. We're individuals, but together, together we can go further. So I appreciate you being here. Please consider subscribing to the channel. I won't beg you again. 
okay? But it's free. I'm not selling you anything. There's no membership fee to come here. Nothing like that. We do have some sponsors. I'll talk about them briefly, okay? But, but this is all free and it's all helpful. We got some great people. If you have any questions, you got to be subscribed. I have a hard time saying that word. Subscribed to the channel, but ask a question in the in the forum here, in the comment. People want to help you, okay? People want to help me. We want to help each other. Not only does it feel good to, to get help from people, but it feels good to help people as well. And we've got some awesome people here. That includes you. I've gone on long enough about that. Let's talk about... Let's talk about number four, Citibank, Citigroup, City whatever, the massive American bank. Now, we like, don't worry, guys, it gets way better from here, okay? But we like what City is saying. What do you think City's predicting for gold in 2024? If you guessed 2100 and $75, you are correct. And they have a huge, huge team of people that analyzes the precious metals market, the natural resources market. So the fact that City is seeing nearly $2,200 gold in 2024, that's something we can be happy about. Let's rejoice, right? Right? You know who's not happy? The old gold bear. See? He's blindfolded, for those of you who don't know, and his blindfold will not come off one second before gold hits, like it says on the blindfold, $2,500 per ounce. Now, we've got a big party planned when that happens. Even, I think, Peter Grandich will be here. Um, Jerome Powell's going to be here for it. And we're also going to have Joe Biden, the President of the United States. He'll be here as well, and so will you, because it's going to be a big party when we hit $2,500 gold. And it's going to happen in 2024. And you know why it's going to happen? Because just like City said, we're going to hit all new all time, all new time highs. <laughs> I think that's how we'll say it, basement dwellers from now. We're going to hit all new time highs, new all time highs. You know what I'm saying? In 2024. And when that happens, when we get to that 2100, it's a rocket ship to 2600. Think about the silver price. Don't forget, right? A lot of us are more into physical silver than actual physical gold. The silver price at those levels, we may see a four at the beginning of the silver price. The beginning, yeah, into the 40s. I could see that next year very realistically, right? And from there, again, guys, a lot of people say we just need to get to a three on, you know, into the 30s for silver. And from there, it's going to be a very aggressive shot forward. When it comes to silver, I don't know how you feel about this, but I heard somebody mention this just the other day. Some, some, uh, they were they were talking about, oh, well, silver was at $50 twice. And, bah, bah, you know, you hear that silver was at $50 and now it's less than half of its all time high. I'm going to have a sip of coffee, and while I'm doing that, I want you to think about that. Silver was at $50, and now it's less than its all-time high. Uh-oh. Out of respect for those of you who didn't appreciate my slurping noises when I drank coffee, I now mute the microphone. So this idea that silver is still less than 50% of its all-time high. I heard a top analyst point this out. He's like, you erase that. Those were both very temporary spikes in the price. Really? Really? The all-time high for silver in nominal dollar terms, fiat, unicorn, fart dust, right, basement dwellers? Those of you who are basement dwellers got your badge. You know what unicorn fart dust is. Really, the high price in silver was about $30. So once we get above 30, it's going to be like gold getting above 2100. It's really clear sailing. Uh, calm seas with a nice tailwind, right? Imagine yourself, and it's going to go, and it's going to go quickly, okay? So Citibank's telling us almost $2,200 gold, 
Yeah, that'll put silver in the new all-time high category. Adjusted new all-time high category as well. Who's Saxo Bank? I had to look these companies up. I did a lot of research for this video, so hopefully you're writing this all down. Okay, basement dwellers? <laughs> Saxo Bank is Danish. And then, to further complicate matters, every time I heard, hear the word Danish, I'm like, what country is that? Which is, I believe, Denmark. But they're a massive old uh, Danish bank, and they have a 2200 They went with a nice round number, $2,200 for gold next year. The next one, number five, was Commerce Bank. Uh, Commerce Bank is a commercial bank in Germany, and the Germans are smart, and the Germans love their silver. The Germans love their gold. Commerce Bank has been around just a few years, since 1870, which if my math is correct, uh, that's like 160 years, okay? Commerce Bank, $2,075, another one that I'm not too crazy about, but the Germans will come around, right, when they realize, and, and a lot of these, these companies are probably looking at potential adjustments to their 2024 gold price estimates because, guys, as of Friday, we were above $2,000 in gold. What do you think is going to happen tonight? I'm a little worried, okay? I could be dead wrong. I could be dead wrong, right? And I'm going to be at Six Flags St. Louis at Fright Fest with my daughter, so I'll have to be watching while I'm there. But I got I'm a little worried. Are you worried about the gold price tonight? I got a feeling because we've had this happen so many times that we could see a Sunday night smash down. It'll be okay. If it happens, if we get the Sunday night smash, if we get $50 an ounce down in gold, $40, $30, the worst is when it's like 17 or 12 on Sunday night, and then Monday morning it's down $60 or something like that. Look, all bumps in the road, because later in this video, we're going to talk about on a very simplistic level, right? We're going to keep it simple. It's Sunday, su simple Sunday, a very simplistic level, the strong support factors in place right now for the silver and gold market. Okay. Next, TD. Yes, TD Ameritrade, TD, <clears throat> excuse me, TD Securities, the massive American financial firm or are they canadian oh boy i should i i didn't i forgot to really look that up anyway nonetheless north american <laughs> financial company 2100 is their forecast for the gold price in 2024 the next one gets very interesting livermore partners have you ever heard of livermore partners they are a huge hedge fund type wealth management type company based in Northbrook, Illinois. Now, I have a quote for you from their like CEO, their president, the guy who founded Livermore Partners, but these guys manage billions for wealthy people. They came out with an astounding, are you ready? Because this will make the hair stand up. These are the smart guys. These are the hedge fund managers. These are the um, the people who uh, play 3D chess like we do. They're calling for $2,500 gold. And I want to read, I have something I want to read to you here, a quote from the founder, uh, David Niehauser. He's the founder of Livermore Partners. He was on CNBC, our favorite channel, and said that he foresees gold reaching the remarkable milestone of $2,500 by the conclusion of the upcoming year. He says, quote, 2024 is when I see gold breaking out and reaching new highs and beyond. Yes. Okay. <laughs> I, we've been saying this for months, right? Once it breaks out the new highs, it's it's to infinity and beyond. No doubt about it. You can, I, 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 I feel so strongly about the opportunity that we have for just absolute soaring prices in gold. And where, where's silver going to be when gold's at $2,500, right? You know where it's going to be. It's going to be significantly, significantly higher. And remember, this is 
a guy who's not really beholden to anyone. I want you to take a step back. When you talk about this, what's his name? D David Niehauser. He manages money for very wealthy people. That's who he's beholden to. He doesn't have any advertisers he has to worry about. He doesn't have any industry associations he has to worry about. He's probably of any of these big banks have different, you know, uh, relationships and, and that can kind of skew and muddy what they talk about. This guy, David Nienhau, he can speak his mind. And he spoke his mind and he sees gold going to new all-time highs and beyond. Let that sink in for a little bit when you think about everything that's going on out there right now that's impacting the silver price and the gold price. Next up, next up, we have Wheaton Precious Metals. Now, obviously, Wheaton Precious Metals has a vested interest in the, um, in the gold and silver price going much higher. They're a big silver and gold royalty streaming company. They're publicly traded. Randy Smallwood uh, founded the company. I believe he's still the chairman of the board at Wheaton. But they also see $2,500 gold in the year 2024. Finally, let's wrap up with a company called XM Australia from our friends down under in Australia. XM. They're a big brokerage house, massive brokerage house, financial company. In Australia, they're calling for $2,200 gold next year. Again, $2,200, when I see that, I see anything above $2,100. What I see is $2,600 because it's going to happen in a matter of months. I'm going to have another sip of coffee. So are we prepared? Are we prepared for what's to come? Hmm? Let's talk briefly about what's going on right now. And please give this a thumbs up. We need to get to 100 so I can ring the bell. I'll ring it 10 times. Okay, guys? And I know we can get that 100 thumbs up. Major, scary, not good. This is not a political show. This is not a, uh, a show where I take sides on major events going on in the world. But what I can tell you is events continue to unfold in an unfortunate manner in the Middle East between Israel and Palestine. Over the weekend in Turkey, uh, there were hundreds of thousands of people who came out protesting uh, against about what's going on there currently. And the president of Turkey, geopolitically right now, guys, the world is at odds like we've never seen. The president of Turkey, Erdogan, 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 I'm sorry, bad pronunciation, came out with some very harsh words um, against Israel. So we're just seeing the world splitting like we've never seen before. We know the Russians are involved. The Chinese are involved. Obviously, the United States is involved. And not only do we have what's going on in Israel, but we have what's going on, don't forget, in Europe. That's kind of been put on the back burner, right? But people are dying in Europe. Thank you, Tony. Wow. Hey, thank you, my friend, for the super chat. That makes me happy on a Sunday morning. Thank you. People are dying. People are, the world is bifurcating. Um, uh, I won't go down this rabbit hole completely, but don't forget that other half of the world has a much different perspective when it comes to the precious metals. Yes, the Chinese, the Indians, the Turkish. Um, was, it was Turkey that just had to raise their interest rates to 35% right? People in Turkey are crazy about gold. You know why they're crazy? Because they've had hyperinflation in Turkey. So people that own gold in Turkey know, right? They know, they, they don't just know. Let me take, let me, let me step that back. I'm sorry. I made an error there. They don't just know, right? They've lived, they've lived. And I'm going to explain that in a second after I ring that bell 10 times, because we got a hundred thumbs up. The bells are part of the show. The people in Turkey have lived the benefits of silver and gold, right? What do you think of when you think of your silver and your gold, right? A way to protect yourself, a way to store your wealth. 
And we've not really, let's be honest, had that ex full experience here in the West, in, part, in countries like the United States, where I live, right in the middle of the country, the armpit of the country, St. Louis, the arch. The arch is like a big deodorant stick. <laughs> St. Louis, the, the most un you think I'm not tough? I live in the most unsafe city in the country, buddy. Anyway, we've not really had to live with the, uh, or had the experience of silver and gold necessarily saving us. Think about if you lived in Turkey, and over the last year, you saw the price of a lot of things in your country go up by 100%, right? Or more. But if you held gold, because guess what? The price of gold kept up with all the inflation in Turkey. The people in Turkey have have lived the benefit of holding precious metals, okay? Um, another big topic we need to touch on this morning, because it does impact the price of the metals, is the fact that nobody owns it. I'm hearing more and more analysts pointing to the fact that uh, and this is not necessarily a good thing, guys. But that that the uh, level of money in the gold and silver ETFs, despite the fact that we're not fans of things like GLD and SLV, but the fact that more and more money continues to be drained from those ETFs. Now, the t the big fancy analysts, right? Because I've been digging into what they're saying. They all say, well. You know, it's really incredible that especially the gold prices remain so strong because we've had such major outflows from the ETFs. And this is the first time I heard several people bring this up. I don't know if this, this it kind of scares me a little bit. I'll be honest with you. I don't know if this will scare you or not. It is the Halloween season, but this is the first time that we've had gold go up so massively in a short period of time where we've not seen inflows, more money coming into the ETFs, things like the GLD, and then, of course, silver as well, the SLV. So there's two ways to look at that. And people are saying, well, it's incredible that the price of gold has held up and done so well and just held up. It's done well. And that silver is, we'll say, held up um, if you know, if that if that if that does not reverse, if we don't see money start to come in, that could be a bit of a drag on the silver and gold price. Okay, I'm just going to be honest with you. But on the happy side, the good side, it does eventually reverse, right? Unless we think gold and silver are just completely going away, when money does start to come back into those ETFs. That will be very supportive. That will be a big major support factor for the precious metal. So we do need to keep an eye on those big ETS because that's a bellwether for overall investor appetite. And investor appetite is horrible. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, we the sentiment in the silver and gold sector is absolutely horrible. Excuse me, I was losing my voice there for a moment. Now, the good news about that is it's, it's, if, if we were sitting here saying, sentiment's great, look, everybody's high as a kite on silver and gold, well, then it can't get much higher. Whereas when we're sitting here now and we're saying, look, sentiment's low. Sentiment in the gold and silver sector, if you want to visualize it like a house, it's like somewhere down here in the basement, okay? That's just the reality. But there's massive room for improvement, in particular in the Western G7 type countries. So we're going to keep an eye on what goes on with that. Let's also not forget that right now, gold in China will cost you almost 6% more per ounce. What is, that's almost like $100. It probably is. That's like $100 more per ounce to buy gold in China. And more and more places throughout the world are starting to use the Shanghai Gold Exchange, the SGE, as their measure for the gold price. People in Hong Kong and, and places like that. So the world is changing in front of us. What are some of the big reasons that are going to support the gold price? As I was digging into these eight uh, analysts <clears throat> that are talking about what to expect for 2024, there were three big themes. The geopolitical situation in the world will continue to support the gold price. Okay, I got two more to talk about, but first, 
let's all say thank you to Pimbex for sponsoring Ron's Basement, making this uh, live stream possible, making the channel possible. Thank you, Pimbex, P-I-M-B-E-X, online bullion dealer. Check them out for yourself. What I found when I checked them out about a year ago was they have a great reputation, great service, great selection, and what's always important to me, the best prices. I think if you check them out, you'll find the same thing. I'd encourage you to do that if you're looking to buy yourself some silver, gold, or platinum. Two more reasons why we could see big support for the metals. Common themes amongst these eight analysts. Everyone's thinking we're going to be heading into a lower interest rate environment. Now, there's some, there's some contention on that point, but generally speaking, uh, whether you want to call it a lower interest rate environment or an environment where the dollar continues to be diluted. Don't we love that word? Diluted, right? Weakened, right? Made less powerful in real terms. And isn't that what's happening right now? Whether we look at it from the perspective of the national debt and the national uh, deficits that are going on, the money printing that is mathematically um, a very high probability as we move into the coming years, because there's nowhere else the money can come from, that the, that the, that the, that the re interest rates will either have to go down Right, But to do that, the Fed is going to have to print money. It's as easy as that. Uh, the other big theme, and we, I've just been hearing this, uh, is percolating out there in the professional analysis community, is the fact that right now, even in the United States, okay, even in the United States, we have an environment where gold is beating the stock market. Okay, but if you go overseas and you compare how gold has performed in other currencies, right? Australia, Japan, China, India, uh, just to name a few, Taiwan, uh, Australia, gold is reaching new all time highs and it's blowing away in most every place in the world any other asset class. Do you think do you think gold's doing better than um, than uh, commercial real estate? Yeah, it is. Do you think gold's doing better than residential real estate? Yes, it is. Do you think gold's doing better than the Australian stock market? Yeah, by like twenty percent this year, year to date. So we've got some big macro factors that could provide massive support for the silver price and the gold price as we head into 2024. And that makes sense. That, that corroborates even further what we're hearing from these big financial service institutions. I got to have a drink of coffee. Let's go to the comments. Woohoo! All right, guys. So, 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 the highest of all the uh, forecasts for the gold price in 2024, $2,500. Do you think that we can beat that number? I think yes. So I'm going to type yes. You guys say yes or no. Do you think we can go above 2500 for gold? I'm doing it. If I'm going to ask you to do it, I'm going to do it. I say yes. All right. I'm going to be interested to see what you guys think. Or will we not breach the $2,500 level in gold next year? Dean just did. Yes. We got yes. Lone Ranger. Hal Ward. Yes. Benny Arnold. Yes. Bud Scott. Yes. UFOs. No joke. Yes. Frank Cavaglia, we like you, says at least, we haven't talked about $3,000 gold. Thank you, Frank. You just warmed the cockles of my heart. Thank you very much. Uh, yeah, ben, more thumbs up would be helpful. Good morning. Alexander, good to see you, my friend. Connecticut Tree Care, yes. Yes, Alexander, yeah, yep, yep, yep. Nobody says no. Uh, gold backer, Ron, do you think the gold price will increase with the gold back prices? Yes. You know, there's a premium, obviously, attached to the gold back prices, but absolutely, um, especially when we get when you look at the scarcity factor involved with the gold back. So I would say yes, it would increase the value of the gold backs. Okay, yes, 
Yes, yes, Jason, Trading View. How about silver? Yeah, let's ask about silver, guys. Let's talk about $40 silver. Do you think that we can get above $40 with silver next year? I'm going to say yes, I do. I believe that we could see north of $40 in silver. I know it's a little bit of a stretch, but yes, I do believe we can. <coughs> Trading view says no, won't happen. Will not happen. We will find out. Lone Ranger, yes. Hal Ward, yes. Coin Shop Chris, Jim M, yes. Yeah, I think, you know, people, and, and, and you hear this now, th that's kind of part of the whole process as well is when people start thinking, and I'm hearing more and more of the mainstream analysts that I talk to, but also that I, you know, I do a lot of digging in and researching for all this stuff, guys. And more and more of these mainstream analysts are saying about talking about how silver is like a slingshot now, right? Um, and you, I won't go into it, but you know the big story for silver, the big picture from a supply-demand perspective. Uh, silver is positioned in a very interesting spot right now. And, and a lot of people are actually, you know, we talked about these gold forecasts. They don't put out silver official silver forecast um, unfortunately but what I hear as a recurring theme is that yeah silver is like gold on steroids and even more so as we head into 2024 and 2025 so I know a lot of us are, are actually from a precious metals perspective maybe a little more focused on silver uh, the professional analyst community doesn't cover it as closely but what they do say is that silver, from a price increase perspective, is set up to have much more uh, exaggerated gains than what we'll likely see with gold. So hang in there with the gold. Hello, Tony Erickson. Hello, Jim M. Hello, Trading View. Yep, it's in interesting, interesting times. You know, we talked last night in terms of the precious metals, and this goes for gold and silver as well. They're even saying that this AI boom, the artificial intelligence boom that's going on, is look, it's not gonna, it's not gonna do what solar panel is, uh, solar uh, photovoltaics are doing for silver, but the demand for the precious metals because of this boom in AI will increase because these high-end chips, thank you, Frank. Wow. Uh, yes, I'll talk about that, Frank. I mentioned that earlier, but but um, but but the but the you know the boom that we could see in AI could provide even some more support, marginal support. And that's the thing we got to remember, guys, when we come to when we're talking about these metals. Like all we need is a little bit more, a little bit margin, a little a little increase on the margin in demand because it's such small markets right now especially in the United States, just a small marginal increase can have major impact on the prices. Frank, yes, gold is near its all-time high and silver isn't even half. But really, when you look at silver, there's the, you know, I won't say I'm 100% behind this, but you got to realize that you need to, you need to kind of take out those two spikes because they really were kind of blow off top spikes when silver went up to $50. If you look at it, I mean, really, I think realistically the all-time high in silver you can look somewhere more in the 30 to 35 dollar per ounce range uh, you may not agree with me on that uh, but i think especially from a, a the perspective of getting a lot of excitement built up and the real value of silver that once we get above 30 dollars i'll consider 32 35 range 36 range I tell you, thirty-six to me is the magic number. Thirty-six dollars per ounce for silver to me is the equivalent of a new all-time high. And I and I, what I'd like to see is that we get there and build a new floor, build a new base, a new foundation, right where the price can't really go below. And then as we move into the coming decade, um, that the price is able to build upon that, and that we do get, you know, people like Keith Newmeyer who are talking about. About triple digit silver can you imagine 100 dollars silver i can and i know it seems crazy but really that's only about four times higher from where we are right now why can't we go up four times in value other things can 
right? Oil can go from $20 to $80, go up four times in value. Bitcoin, you know, it went up 16,000 times in value, and it's make-believe unicorn fart dust, in my opinion. Why can't silver go up four times in value? Oh, yeah, it did back in the 70s. It went up like 25 times in value, 17 times, whatever the heck, you know, however you want to measure it. Even if you just look at $30, it went up 10 times. So, yeah, silver can go up four times in value. Absolutely. Even in U.S. dollars and the United States of America. And when you think about how screwed up everything is right now with the national debt, and you know, the, the Treasury Department needs to uh, pay off $16 trillion. I'm going to repeat this because I'm Ron the Repeater. Do you know a trillion is a million million? And so we got 16 million millions that we need to pay off here in the coming year. And you're going to tell me that a real asset, right? We're, the, 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 it's going to be... <clears throat> It's going to be full-blown unicorn fart dust land in this country within the next, let's say, three to five years. There's mathematically no other way to deal with it. You know, I mean, they're going to try all kinds of crazy uh, new, new, new things to confuse everybody and call it all types of different programs. But the reality is, the reality, the reality is it's all going to turn into a bunch of make-believe um, paper an electronic quote unquote currency that is going to be diluted and losing value. But, whoop, whoop, but that's just my opinion. Can we get a few more thumbs up so we can get to 200? I really want to ring the cowbell this morning. <clears throat> um, that's just my opinion. Don't make any financial decisions based upon anything that I'm sharing with you today, okay? <clears throat> I just tell you what I think and what I do. I buy my, my silver from Pimbex. I own First Mining Gold. They're another sponsor of Ron's Basement, Canadian Gold Development Company. That guy, Keith Newmeyer, who calls for triple-digit silver, well, this is his gold company. He started it back in 2016, acquired, <clears throat> excuse me, acquiring a a bunch of uh, big, great properties at the bottom of the market, gold development properties in Canada. So they are sitting on 13 million ounces of gold in the ground in Canada. They're working their way through the exciting development phase. FFMGF is the stock symbol. Check them out. Do your own research. If you want to talk to somebody at the company, reach out to Paul Morris. Yes, you can talk to a real person at a gold mining company, and he'd be happy to talk to you, answer any questions you might have. Paul's email address is in the description of this and all my videos, paul at firstmininggold.com. Call Paul, or Paul will call you after you email him. Trust me, he will, and he's a great, great, great guy. And the junior mining stocks have just been, we talk about the um, about the sentiment, the feeling in the market toward gold and silver right now, physical silver, physical gold, it's still really low. And you can feel that in particular, in the junior in particular, silver mining and gold mining, gold developer, gold explorer segment. It is as low as it's been. Do you know that the volume of shares traded on the Toronto Stock Exchange? Now, that's where all the junior gold and silver mining companies are traded. Last I heard the volume there, the number of shares traded was like, I don't know, like a 20-year low, right? That just shows you how the sentiment has gotten so low. We already know the general investing public doesn't really care about silver and gold. And that's a good thing because they're going to start to wake up. But even within our community, the sentiment is very, very low. This has got to be at or near a bottom, guys, and things will get much, much, much better, okay? A lot of talk about silver extinction. I made a new video about that. It'll be out in a few days, like charts showing that we'll be out of silver by 2030. Um, I think Bald Guy Money put out a new video this morning about silver extinction. Go when we're done here. Go watch that. Um, and make sure you leave a comment and tell them you're from Ron's basement. Say, hey, Ron, hey, I'm a basement dweller, and I say hello to you, my friend. 
uh, bald guy money. He always puts out uh, very well thought videos with a lot of charts and, and that type of thing as well. Okay. Um, what I'm hearing from my contacts on the street and the uh, like the coin shops, the bullion dealers, is that sales are still good. It's weird, right? One thing they're all saying to me is they're, they are still seeing a good level of big purchases, like people buying monster boxes, you know, $15,000 worth of silver at a time or, or $80 worth of silver or $80,000, excuse me, worth of silver at a time. So there's still demand there. We know, right? Okay. We know what's going on right now more and more people will start to join us, will start to wake up. And that's good. You know, we'll welcome them. The reality is there's only a little bit of room on the silver and gold boat. You likely have your seat, right? You've already paid paid for your ticket. You're on the boat. I am as well, definitely. Uh, there's a little bit of room left, but then it's going to get real crowded real fast, right? And it's going to cost a lot more money for people to join us on that boat. And we look at it as a lifeboat. I do anyway. <clears throat> I kind of look at the U.S. economy like the Titanic or something like that. Uh, and we're in a lifeboat floating outside, right? And people are saying, hey, we need help. We need, you know, we need help. Or the boat's fine. It's not going down. That's what. That's where we are right now, right? We're in the lifeboat. We've already put ourselves in the water. We're like, we're getting off this Titanic, okay? <laughs> we're out there floating, the boat's starting to list the Titanic and the people are on the the are are drinking and eating at the restaurant laughing at us saying, "Oh, look at those crazies." You know, they think the boat's going down. What do they know? Everything's fine. This boat could never sink. This boat's in great shape. And you know what? They maybe they're right, right? We don't know for sure how it'll play out, but we do know that silver and gold have protected people for thousands of years. Thank you for being here, guys. Have a great day. Have a great Sunday. All right, we got Halloween coming up Tuesday. So we'll have lots of fun, lots of fun things to look forward to here on the channel as well. Don't forget, we got ronsbasement.com coming up with a special place where you'll be able to go 24 hours a day to talk to other basement dwellers. And there's a big Black Friday, over 20 ounce giveaway. There's a link in this video that you can go click on and there's a video showing you everything you can win on black friday right when we do the big giveaway and we're going to do a christmas eve eve giveaway that'll be tied to uh, our new chat room our new forum at ronsbasement.com we got uh, dot, dot com don working on that thank you for that thank you coin shop chris thank you jake thank you annie thank you everyone for being here this morning did i forget anybody all the moderators dean r connecticut tree care okay uh jake's custom parts this is not possible without you okay have a great day and i'll talk to you guys soon